Recognizing the higher risks of rural roadways, the Alabama Department of Transportation, in partnership with the Federal Highway Administration, utilizes a portion of the Highway Safety Improvement Program to fund a high-risk rural road safety program. To learn more about the HRRR program, join me, James Boyer, Josh Harville, and DeAndre Kimbrough as we talk about the program. Hello, I'm DeAndre Kimbrough. Uh, next to me is uh, James Boyer, and across the table is uh, Josh Harville. Uh, we're here to talk about high-risk rural roads and the uh, application process. James, if you could start us off and give us a little information on high-risk rural roads. Uh, well, the HRRR program is what we call it. There's a HRRR special funding rule that when your crash rate on rural roads hits a certain level, uh, FHWA, we have to obligate certain uh, HSIP money to the high-risk rural road program. So, uh, so we had a, a fiscal year 2019 was the first time we had that and uh, first time that rule kicked into effect in a while. And then we've, we've also learned that we're going to have it in uh, fiscal year 2020. Uh, what can you tell us about the application process? Uh, well, first, we've got the, the High Risk Rural Roads application guidance that's on, on our website, on the ALDAP website, on the sure. local transportation uh, bureau page. And that's got everything in there that, that we'll talk about. It, it, it goes into pretty good detail of what an application should include and kind of what we're looking for. Uh, well, first, the application, uh, we've got uh, three different areas of mm -hmm. HRRR projects that we were kind of looking at. It's uh, general safety projects. Those can include many different things from shoulder widening to super elevation corrections um, to, uh, to clearing uh, trees to increase the clear zone covers a wide range of, of projects. We've got the traffic control device uh, group of projects. It's uh, pavement markers, or race pavement markers, yeah. signage, uh, striping. And then the, the third one we have is an area we wanted to focus on, which was unshielded bridge ends. We realized that a lot of the counties, uh, rural counties especially, have uh, structures that have guardrail up, bridge rail up, but right. do not have, um, do not have uh, end treatments on them. We wanted to go ahead and and, and target those to get uh, an up-to-date um, end treatment on those. So the application process, you can, you can apply uh, the, the criteria. First off, it has to be a, a major collector, minor collector, or a local road. And it can't be inside an urbanized boundary as defined by the U.S. Census, uh, the last U.S. Census. Can you give us an example of a 2019 application that was approved for a general safety project? The, the main majority of the crashes we've seen were, were in curves, and uh, we've had everything from uh, a super elevation correction on, on a roadway where the super elevation when the bridge, when the roadway was designed was not uh, was, was not at the standard, so they realized that that was the issue, and they'd come in and, and correct the super elevation on it, as well as put uh, uh, widening some shoulders. We've, we've seen that as well, where they come in and you just widen the shoulder on, uh, on a curve, um, and then, uh, and then clearing also, we've had a couple projects where the, the safeties, they realized the, the safety clear zone inside of the curve was, was not, uh, was not adequate. So they did come in and they were, they were going to, uh, to remove some, remove some trees and, and some brush to, to kind of widen that out. One of the things that, that he and I get from our peers is, you know, that they have a hard time, uh, providing the, the maintenance, uh, needed as far as, uh, center line stripe, edge stripe. That we all realize are, are good safety applications on our rural roads and the traffic control device uh, project application is perfect for those counties but the challenge seems to always be is, is, is making sure uh, that the application they're proposing with the striping uh, matches the guidelines that have been set up for us for ALDOT through FHWA as far as the guidelines we have to meet uh, to, to get a successful project. The traffic control device group of projects is, is much needed in in uh, the county on the county road system but what we don't want uh, what was not allowed is safety money is not allowed to to be spent on maintenance project the key to me on these is that it's data driven what we don't want uh in in the biggest thing as far as projects applications that we got that that we um that were denied uh that were where a county would come in or an agency would come in and say hey i've got these 10 roads and these are my worst stripes that I've got. I want to get these restriped, and that's pretty much all that was said. They didn't have the 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 crash data to back up 
you know, the, the need or the justification. And they were doing it, the, the roads they picked were based more on the condition of the stripe than the actual, uh, the crash data that was there. So, so yeah, as long as it's, as long as it's data driven, as long as you can provide a need. And like I said earlier, mm -hmm. we're not looking for, you know, 15 crashes. We're looking for one to two to 10 crashes in an area that shows that there's a need and that, Hey, if we can go in and put, Raise pavement markers on the outside, restripe the center line, and put raised pavement markers, put new signs up, then then absolutely uh, we've we've been able to do that. So, so you know, being in a rural county, how could we get kind of creative with this? Um, I like the idea of widening shoulders, uh, putting rumble strips on the shoulders. But if my roadway is probably going to be in worse condition than the shoulders, then uh, we have to be creative. We either have to join it with another project is that possible um or uh maybe plan for a future project once we've done the uh primarily you know the cause of crashes whether it's road conditions or uh like you said uh it could be um site site uh improvement on the roadway mm -hmm. so is that a possibility hrr won't pay They'll, it'll pay for some minor leveling that's something else but as far as just resurfacing a roadway it will not it will not pay for that but what counties have done is they've come in and they've either uh used their own uh the, the existing uh you know county funds mm -hmm. or some type of uh, federal aid uh, uh money as well and uh yeah you can absolutely combine hrr money or an hrr project with with other other type of federal money or county money and uh yeah there's ways we'll just you know on the plans we have to uh, uh we have to list list them separate on the plans as far as mm -hmm. quantity is concerned that way right. we just you know we make sure what we're spending the triple r money on versus what we're spending the other funding source on but right. that's that's not an issue at all as far as uh trying to trying to pull your money together to get the best the best bang for your buck there okay so, okay yeah. all right you see any uh, applications uh, utilizing Force Account? So you can accomplish HRRR projects in um, three ways. You can use the normal through state services as far as getting uh, letting it through state services and um, you know using utilizing that tool. You can use uh, Force Account work, and a lot of the bridge ends, uh, unshielded bridge ends, are using Force Account. And you also can use in place. Uh, bids as well. Okay. So if I know a lot of counties have a, a striping or a, a, a guardrail um, contract set up, you can use those as well to, to come in and say, all right, you know, I'm going to use my unshielded bridge end, my guardrail contract to come in and do that, or my striping contractor can come in and, and do that as well. So this, this past year, we had a few that, uh, you know, the, the first criteria is being on a, a major collector, minor collector, a local road, mm -hmm. and outside of the urbanized boundary. We had a few that were actually inside the urbanized boundary, so they, they were uh, not eligible. So once you meet that initial criteria um, of the, the roadway classification and being outside of the urbanized boundary, the next thing that we saw was just uh, kind of a, like we talked about, a maintenance project where they they didn't have the the data or they didn't have the numbers to, to, to show that there was an issue on that road. They just said, hey, the condition of my road uh, my stripe is not good. Right. We want to fix it. And we said, okay, well, you know, why do we, why do you want to fix that? You know, are you having an issue here? And right. there really wasn't anything to back that up. They didn't, they didn't provide anything. So, uh, you know, once you meet the initial criteria and then, you know, making sure that you've got some type of evidence, data driven evidence that you have an issue, um, you know, a other than that, um, uh, it, there is a few, a few on the applications we did, uh, mm -hmm. tweak the countermeasure that they requested a, a lot of times. And, and I think, uh, you know, they were very open to that where the application came in, they showed that there was an issue and they said they were going to use this type of countermeasure. Right. But we said, you know, for this type of uh, crashes you're having, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, this may be a better option as far as a countermeasure is concerned. You know, if, if it's a, uh, you know, uh, roadway departure and, and they wanted a certain type of countermeasure, we said, you know, actually, if you look at it, this countermeasure is more effective uh, fixing that. So we have adjusted a few um, uh, applications and 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 the design of it, which you know, of course, we got the approval. Uh, you know, the, you know, we talked with the, the agency and the county to do that. Um, but as far as as far as uh, 
projects just not being eligible, you know, you got to meet the initial criteria. And then again, I can't stress that the maintenance, uh, you know, you got to be kind of data driven and have a, a show a need and stay away from just a maintenance driven project. So do you think it's possible that the data was there and the county just didn't know how to retrieve it? If you know there's an issue on your roadway, how do you gather that information right. and kind of, right. and, and display that? Uh, we got some applications that would just give us the, the entire um, the entire crash reports for, mm -hmm. for that for that note or that link, right. um, and then we had some that would to me the, the the best way to do it is you can provide that raw da data but mm -hmm. summarize it for us as well because we all know that 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 crash report uh, right. report can be kind of tedious to look through but if you go through and you summarize it saying all right in this section of roadway I had these type I had this many crashes for these type of reasons that right. goes a long way. Uh, and also just uh, what we've been, we've been, I've been uh, trying to push out there too is the, the care portal um, that, that we've, right. that's recently come online. Um, the care portal is a, an excellent way to go in and you can really tailor and, and be specific on what you're looking for right. as far as pulling data, reasons why as well. It doesn't just tell you, hey, I had, you know, uh, you know five, uh, five crashes on this road. These are the reasons why those crash happened. You can go in and look at the actual uh, diagram from the from the, the safety officer there. So um, yeah, that, that's a great point. I think a lot of times the counties know that there's an, an issue on the road. They mm -hmm. see evidence of crashes, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't have the data to back that up. And right. and, in, and in also in that we've we've told them, hey, if if your roadway shows, you know. If you can pull a report that shows you've got two crashes on this roadway, mm -hmm. but you have evidence that there's been, you know, a lot more crashes just from uh, things being hit, uh, you know, car parts laying out there, right. you know, uh, evidence of, of actual crashes. By all means, put that in your application because we understand that that happens. Right. And the more evidence, the more reason that you have, to, the more reasons we had to say yes in that right. application, the better. Right. Uh, right. Okay, good. How many applications did we get last year? We had 32 counties submit applications, and we got uh, 36 applications. So that's another okay. good question. You can, as a county or an agency, you can submit multiple, multiple. Ap applications. Um, absolutely, uh, you can submit an application for each of the three different categories: the general safety, the traffic control, or the unshielded bridge end. So you can submit an application for each of those, um, and then you can also, uh, a lot of times, what we we had what. Um, a county would do is in which worked out really well is they may have multiple sites as well right. and while they may not be well, the we may not be able to fund all of those sites but if in your application you list your sites in priority you know list them separately your sites and list them in priority and we'll be able you know we'll try to fund as many as, as we can especially with unshielded bridge ends i know we had a county that um that sent us an application in that have a, had a curve a section of roadway that they wanted to address and they said, all right, you know, this is option A, where this is how much it would cost to fix this curve. But ideally, we, you know, it, um, we'd be able to fix another curve down the road as well and make that stretch of road really safe. So this is option B, and it was a great project. So we went ahead and were able to fund A and B. But the county uh, went through, gave us a cost estimate for each, and and uh, and prioritized which one they wanted first. So, um, so yeah, we had 32 counties, I think, uh, submit around 36 applications so they're uh you know we're, we're our goal is to to have every county submit an application there's there's uh money to be spent and there's needs out there that we definitely want to get addressed um so the idea is just to you know hey you know we want to we want we want more counties to to submit uh to identify those identify those problems i know the uh local match is 10 percent. is there a maximum amount for a project or uh, yeah, so this is safety money, so it's a 90-10 split, so 90% mm -hmm. uh, uh, federal and 10% local match. Uh, we tell people that, you know, just or in the, app, in the in the guidance, we've set a soft cap of $100,000 per project, but I always tell people, don't let that soft cap be a deterrent if you have a good project. If you have a project, you know, uh, and you have a an issue on your roadway and you have a worthy project, mm -hmm. submit it and let, let us make the determination whether that, you know, we can fund that or not. Um, yeah. don't, don't be, um, don't be deterred by the, that soft hundred thousand dollar cap because this last year, uh, there were some projects that were, that were absolutely had a need. Uh, they did a great job of, in the application, uh, 
um, conveying that need, uh, you know, as far as having the crash reports and the evidence there. Um, and it was well over the hundred thousand dollar cap and we had no problem funding that just cause it was a, it was a worthwhile project that we know that would make the road, make the road safer. So, so we say a hundred thousand soft cap and that's more just to, if we have to, to make sure everybody gets a, a, a fair share of the money, you know, get it spread right. out and take care of issues throughout the state, but don't let that soft cap be a deterrent from submitting a, a worthwhile project. Okay. There are only a couple of items. Um, that we were restricted from, and that was what utility improvements and right of way acquisition. Right of way, just uh, because of the the time constraints on the money. Yeah. Uh, right of way, uh, any any project that that uh, is going to require to acquire right of way, we, we tend to uh, to not uh, take into consideration, and then utility relocations as well. Um, that the utility re relocations we can do. Uh, but we'd like to stay away from uh, force account work with utility relocations that we said, you know, hey, if we're going to do any type of re utility relocation, it needs to be a state services uh, a project led through state services. And it also needs to be, you know, a minor utility relocation yeah. because this this money, the HRRR money does have a, a, a um, limitation and a time frame when it has to be authorized uh, by the end of within that same fiscal year. So um, ideally, you know, the applications deadline is August 1st and how we, we kind of go through it is uh, we get the applications in. There's a committee that sits down and, and reviews the applications. And mm -hmm. once they we go through and first say, all right, they've met the initial criteria. Mm -hmm. And then two, uh, then we kind of, uh, you know, review all the applications and prioritize them. And we want to get out the uh, let, let all the agencies know. Uh, around um, October 1st of that of that year that you've had an, a project awarded that way you'll have time uh, to, to get everything set up because like I said they that this HRRR money has to be awarded within that same fiscal year so um, so yeah so utility relocations minor and right-of-way uh, acquisition is, is usually not considered just because of the time frame Makes that sense. it takes to do that and you are the chief contact, right, to, for counties that have questions as they put their applications together, uh, if they're having trouble with care or uh, what is a crash modification factor or reduction factor. Or a absolutely, yeah. So you I can am, point them in the right direction. Absolutely, yeah. I, if uh, I'm, I, I'm the contact, and uh, if if you know if you have any questions about you know what's what's eligible, what type of projects we've received in the past, what type of projects compete well, I'm more than happy to. To go over with any county if they have an idea for a project to call me up and and discuss to say hey absolutely that type of project is exactly what we're looking for or now nah, maybe that's not what we're looking for but if you do it from this angle we you know it, it'd be more competitive um, and then also uh, you know just any any questions in general on on what is required in your application as well again the the high risk rural roads application guidance is available on our website under the uh, local transport on the ALDOT website the local transportation uh, uh, bureau page and that goes through just about everything we talked about and it really steps through what what is required in an application but again if you have any questions you know if county has any questions that call me and I'm more than happy uh, another great resource also is the is the safety improvements for high risk rural roads. Uh, this book here has got it's organized by countermeasure. So if you're if you're looking for a specific countermeasure, you can go in there and mm -hmm. and look for it. And it also has all the the um, the data that you were talking about that we r would like to see in our applications. The the crash modification factor, the benefit cost ratio, all that kind of stuff is in here. And uh, you can you can absolutely use that to look that up and that. And while that those, you know, all that data is nice to have, and it helps us kind of, um, you know, sort things out. It's it's definitely not the 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 you know the the bottom line as far as how we determine. We definitely right. don't determine, you know, which projects are. Um, we don't prioritize projects based strictly on on these numbers. We definitely look at the whole picture and 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 uh, you know the need, uh, the countermeasure that they're requesting. You know. Um, we, we take all that into account. So. Well, I, I just, I'd like to say, you know, on behalf of Chambers County, and I'm sure uh, all the counties across the state, especially us rural ones like DeAndre and I are in, uh, that we really appreciate the opportunity, ALDOT, FHWA, Auburn University, all of our partners that are, that are working 
uh, together with this to uh, provide this program to us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, you know, we we uh, we have a hard time back home um, doing small projects or performing small projects uh, with a specific purpose of um, you know a, a curve or a, a slow shoulder or a, a sign uh, project. Uh, the money's not there. You know, most of the time, the requests we get are related to. Why are we not resurfacing? Uh, why are we not improving the condition of our roads? That's right. the 90% of the, of the requests we get from the public. So this gives us an opportunity to have that discussion with both uh, our uh, our public, the public, uh, the constituents from, from our commissioners and our commissioners. Uh, right. Get that in the media um, and, 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 and inform them of, of why we need to do uh, safety projects and try to reduce crashes across uh, rural roads and, and in our county. So we appreciate it. Thank you, James, for all the work you've put into it. We know you've had some challenging applications. You've said you've got some good ones. Hopefully through this video, you'll get more good ones than, right. than challenges moving forward. Absolutely. No, I think I think the project or the the uh, this program is, I think it's great. You know, like you said, most of the time in the counties, in, in the, in the, especially the rural counties, you, mm -hmm. you don't have an opportunity to really focus on safety. You're kind of being more reactive uh, to a lot of, a, a lot of things, and um, and I think the uh, this HRRR program is a great way to kind of go and, and really look at look at the roads and, and pinpoint you know make them safer, not just uh, right. um, a lot of times the public they don't see you know they don't see they don't know what's not safe until right. until it's too late you know right. like they don't see what's what's unsafe till it's too late, and this this program really can can focus on that and uh, and uh, yeah it, it's a it's a great opportunity. For the counties to get that type of money, we just need to get some get some good applications, uh, right. some good needs up. There. Don't be discouraged by the application. That's right. Put one in. Absolutely. I know. Right. Hey, I, I understand it. It is a process to go through and get the application in. Um, you know, get it together. But if you spend the time to 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 do that, um, and this past year, uh, you know, we had very few uh, applications that were submitted that were not accepted and did not get some money. So. Uh, the chances are very good that you know if if you send a good application and that you will get uh, get rewarded and get get money uh, get some HRRR money to take care of some issues. Well, that sounds good. I mean, so, when, a, when a commissioner or when a commit when you can go to the commission and present a competitive grant that your county has acquired through an application submitted uh, on a program such as this, that that's good PR for your county. Um, it's obviously a good program. So, <clears throat> all right. Well, I appreciate you guys. Uh, sitting down and, and uh, like I said, hopefully this this video will will definitely uh, will definitely inspire some some counties and, and other agencies to to go ahead and submit applications. All right, sounds great. Thank you.